In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a more streamlined process for ordering labs, diagnostic imaging, and procedures. This is particularly helpful if you're printing or faxing labs that are going to be going to an outside facility rather than ones being done in-house or those that you may have an electronic interface. In this example, I have one of my favorite X-Men again, and I have given him two diagnoses of cough and some suprapubic abdominal pain. And now I've gone ahead and ordered some labs, imaging, and a procedure uh, to diagnose these problems. We'll open the treatment window so you can see where I ordered these. This is the same as any other order. Notice I've got the two diagnoses here. I'm going to click on Browse to show the labs. In this case, you can see that there's a CBC with differential and a CMP ordered. They're both ordered because of the abdominal pain. And here on the ellipsis button, where it says click for details, if I click this, you can see in the clinical information I've written pelvic pain. Now normally our providers at our clinic don't have to do this for the labs because the labs are done in-house and it's interfaced directly so the laboratory could look up the note themselves if it was necessary. I'm going to click next. I will go to the CMP and you can see that I put the same thing, pelvic pain. I'm going to save that. Now let's jump over to diagnostic imaging. When I do so, you can see that it changes. And now for cough, I have also ordered a chest x-ray. I've associated it with cough. And here I have ordered, rather I have entered the clinical information. This one is required at our clinic because the information that's put in the clinical information box will transmit electronically with the order to the radiologist so that they can see the symptoms or diagnostic considerations explaining why I ordered this particular test. I'm going to save this and jump to procedures. Now in our environment we always have this box because we have a group of radiologists that read our x-rays. I'm going to put no because this is a fake patient. Normally however I would put yes if I wanted our radiology group to read it. Notice I've now gone over to procedures and I've ordered in this case a diagnostic colonoscopy and look you can see that I've misordered it. I'm not going to do this because of a cough, I'm doing it because of abdominal pain. So to demonstrate how to change that, I click the details and here I can change the diagnosis to the correct one. Also notice that I have written recurrent lower abdominal pain as the reason for doing the colonoscopy. I'm going to save this, hit OK and you will see that the orders are updated. Now the cough is the only one that has the x-ray associated with it. Everything else is ordered because of the abdominal pain. Now we have actually had one of our web designers modify slightly the XML file that eClinicalWorks uses to produce the requisition for labs, diagnostic imaging, and procedures. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's very similar. In this case, I'm actually going to fax the labs. The reason I'm doing that is because you can see the paper that's going to print without actually having to print it. So I'm going to choose fax. I'm going to fax order. This box lets me choose which one of these I want to print out. For example, if I was printing the labs to go to one laboratory facility, such as LabCorp Request, then I needed to separately print the x-ray requisition, perhaps to go to the hospital, and then I needed to separately print the requisition for the colonoscopy to send to a gastroenterologist or surgeon. I could uncheck or check these and fax or print these as needed. I'm going to leave them all in one requisition for this demonstration. I click OK. This is the typical fax box, and I'm not actually going to fax it, but if I was, I could search for the laboratory company, the referring physician, the facility or hospital, or wherever I was going to send it, and it would fill the information in, or I could just write the fax here. The key point here is this center window here. This is the form that would be faxed. Also, if I printed it using the print instead of the fax function, this form is what would be printed. Notice as I scroll down, then it's got all the demographic information that we expect out of this patient's chart. And now when I scroll down, you can see the three sections. Laboratory, it has the labs that I've ordered, fasting, the reason I'm doing it, and now notice this pelvic pain clinical information box appears. Now, before we modify the laboratory XML page, this clinical info box was here. 
but it was only here for laboratory tests. Since our lab person, correction, our radiology and web designer person redesigned this, you can now see under diagnostic images, we've ordered the x-ray, it shows the assessment, the reason I've done it, and this clinical information box appears. Prior to our modification, this would not appear. I have no idea why not. It's the same form, but eClinical hasn't added it. Um, similarly, on procedures, here's the diagnostic colonoscopy. I didn't check fasting, although it typically would be for this procedure. My reason for doing it. And again, here's the information that I put in the clinical information box. If I were to print this or fax this, this exact information will be on the requisition, which will be sent to the facility or the physician who's going to be doing the colonoscopy. So the differences are subtle, but they are important. To recap, the differences are whatever you put in the clinical information box for labs has always shown up on the requisition. We have now modified the form so that the clinical information also will show up on diagnostic imaging and procedures. For those who are curious and note this instructions box, these instructions are not something that you write at the time of ordering. These are actually written uh, when the lab is designed on the back end and we're actually going to be in the process of removing this box because for the most part we don't need it. Um, this solution that we've come up with only works if you're hosting your own eClinicalWorks installation and you have local access to the XML and the XSL files. If eClinicalWorks is hosting your installation in the eClinicalWorks cloud, you won't be able to do this until eClinicalWorks decides to enable this themselves because if you're on the cloud, you don't have local access to the files or the uh, Apache Tomcat web servers that generate this. This would be one of several reasons that we have chosen to host our own installation of eClinicalWorks rather than using the cloud. If you have any questions or want the details on the modified XML file, please let me know in the comments stream. Thank you.